Welcome back, Annie and all. I hope you all gave Father God thanks as you wake up this morning. Remember to give him all honor, praise, and glory, because it belongs to him and only him. Hallelujah. Let's go right into prayer. I love you all with the love of the Lord, and Father God loves you more. Let's go right into prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you this morning to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we say thank you. We're so very grateful and thankful to who you, for who you are, who you are in us, who you are to us. You're everything we need, Lord God. We're nothing without you. We cannot make it without you. We can do nothing of our own. It's all you, Father God, and we say thank you. And we know that your grace is sufficient for us all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let us help us, Father God, in everything that we say and do, to be a reflection of you. Let us be mindful you see and know all things. Be mindful how we treat others. You are love, therefore we must love. We can agree to disagree, but we must have love because you are love, my Father. And because as we want you, we would like for you, Father God, to forgive us for our sins and our transgressions, past, present, and future. The same shall we for our fellow man. Thank you, Father, teaching us how to, thank you, Father God, for teaching us how to love, not only how to love, how to forgive, not only how to forgive, how to forget. Thank you, Father God, for sending your only begotten Son to teach us how to strive for holiness, to be a reflection of you, to be Christ-like, to live a life of righteousness for your name's sake. Thank you, Father God, for teaching us how to love, to be loving towards one another, to be loving to our spouses, to our children our family members, friends, strangers, and enemies. Remember to entertain strangers. You never know. You can be entertaining an angel unawares. Father God, we thank you for all that you do, have done, and will do. Father God, we repent for any wrongdoing, past, present, and future, that we transgressions or sins that we have committed. We, we sorry, Father. Please forgive us. We repent on behalf of any and all our relatives, family members, loved ones, and friends, Lord God. We repent, Father God. We repent on behalf of our forefathers, our ancestors, our ancestors all the way down to our grandparents. We repent on behalf of our grandparents, parents, ourselves, our children, our grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. We have any. We repent, Father God. Please forgive us. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Thank you, Father God, for your daily provisions, for the shelter over our head, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet. Money in our pocket and food that you bless that we eat. Let us all learn to be content where we are. We are so very grateful and thankful, Father God, for any and everything. Any and everything we count it a blessing. We say thank you, my Father. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Thank you. Father God, we give you all honor, praise, and glory because it belongs to you and only you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we plead the blood of Jesus over all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, our family members, loved ones, and friends. We ask, Father God, a head of protection around all the listeners, not only a head of protection, a firewall of protection around all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. And we ask, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may you please bless all the listeners, bless those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. To prosper. But Father God, only you know we have need of. It's your will, your way. Hallelujah. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, as we go through this day, we ask for your will to be done in our lives, in our ministry, in our homes, in our families' lives, loved ones, uh, my family members' lives, my husband's family members' lives, uh, my children, grandchildren, mothers and fathers of my grandchildren. All the saints all over the world, our neighbors, and we love all our neighbors as we love ourselves and the community. Thank you, Father. And we know that he that has begun to work on our son to the day of Christ's coming, and it's going to be a glorious day. We look forward to that coming, that day of your coming, Lord Jesus. We want to be counted worthy. Help us to be counted worthy, Lord God. Cleanse us from head to heart, from head to toe, Lord God. Cleanse our heart. Yes, purify our heart, Lord God. <laughs> yes, purify that heart. Cleanse us, Lord God. We ask, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you repent, that, that you, re excuse me, Lord God, we all should repent. Glory be to God. Yes, we all should repent and turn from our wicked ways. Glory be to God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask 
that you would please remove, remove the spirit of unforgiveness from each and every one of my hearts and burn it, Father God, so we don't receive it again. And uh, you will re uh, fill it with your Holy Spirit so that we have love, unconditional love, that we can pour upon others as you poured upon us. And again, we ask that you remove the spirit of unforgiveness. <laughs> Not you repent, Lord God. No, God forgive. You don't need to repent. We need to repent. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. Father God, help us to guide our eyes, heart, mind, and soul at all times. Because evil's waiting to pounce even at the door. And we're not going to let him in. No, we're not. We're going to strive for holiness and holiness only. Help us to strive for holiness, Father God. Help us, Lord God. We need you. We pray for our leaders and our president that they lean not to their own understanding, but acknowledge you in all thine ways, so you may direct their paths, and that they be obedient and do your will, not just the president or in our leaders, each and every one of us. May we all take heed, because it applies to each and every one of us. None of us is excluded. You know. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for all the laws of abortion to be aborted right here, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for all the safe havens to be built. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord God, for all uh, those that haven't come to the truth, that they give their life to you today, that they be awakened, Lord God. Please wake them up, any and all. Shake them, Father God. Wake them. We know there's a shaking going on. Wake up, people, before it's too late. Please, I pray thee, wake up. Wake up. Please wake up. And begin to live a life of holiness. Strive for holiness. And uh, tell others about Father God. You need to do that. We need to spread the gospel. Wake the people up. People still in sleep and slumber, wake them up. You that are wicked, open your mouth. Don't be ashamed. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and to salvation. To everyone that believe it. To the Jews first and also to the Greeks. And we believe it and receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us be bold in our walk. Open your mouths. Let us save souls to Christ Jesus. He's the way to truth and the light. There's no other way to salvation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and Satan, we rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All evil, we rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Overtake you, bind you, and cast you out of the place. You'll never return. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. We say, go from whence you came. And do not come back in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even if it is the pits of hell, we proclaim Jesus Christ and he alone. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we can't say thank you enough. We're grateful to you and for you. We're grateful for any and everything that you do have done and will do. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. We praise our holy name. You're worthy to be praised each and every day, all day. We glorify our holy name. To God be all the honor, praise, and glory. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belongs to you and only you, Father God. We say use this for your glory and your glory alone. Everything I do is for your glory and your glory alone, my Father. And you're greatly to be praised, by the way. And we love you with an everlasting love and will never forsake thee. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with a holy kiss. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray, amen and hallelujah. Let us all strive for holiness and holiness only, hallelujah. If you haven't given your life to Christ, what are you waiting for? You have the opportunity to do so right here, right now. Have you heard the good news? The good news is Jesus Christ, he's coming back, and he's coming back sooner than you think. Don't no man know the day or the hour except the Father. He's coming back for a spotless, blameless, unblemished bride. If you're ready to do what is right and receive Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior, then please say this prayer. And don't just say it, mean it from your heart. That you're going to seek him in sincerity and truth with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And please say this prayer. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I am sorry. And please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you died on the cross and shed your holy sinless blood and was risen from the dead three days later after being crucified. Help me to seek eternal life Live a life of holiness, a life pleasing and acceptable to you. 
Help me to study your word and obey it and repent daily. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, please repent for your sins. That means you're going to turn from your wicked ways. You're going to strive for holiness and holiness only. And you're not going to sin on purpose. And you ought to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations and God bless you in your walk with Christ. And remember this. It is not a religion. It's a personal relationship between you and the Lord thy God. A commitment and love. We in the body of Christ, we welcome you, my new brother and sister. Welcome to the body of Christ. May we edify one another. Pray with and pray for one another. Pray without ceasing. Fast. Bear one another's burdens. Give love and charity because they cover a multitude of sin. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And all of us, and we love you. We in the body of Christ, we love you. And Father God loves you more. God bless you. Each and every one of us, remember, we must read God's word. We can't live by it if we don't understand it. Okay? If we don't hear the word. We, if we don't hear the word, we don't know the word. But see, God, Father, God has poured out his spirit upon all flesh. There are no excuses and there's no compromising. You can't say you didn't know. You can't say you didn't know. It's not acceptable. Please read your Bible daily. You don't need somebody to read it for you. You don't need somebody to tell you what it say. You need to reach out to the Father yourself. Read that Bible. Cry out to him down on your knees in prayer. And he'll answer you. you hear from him. To God be all the glory. Congratulations and God bless you. Well, we're going to go into scripture. Hallelujah. And Father God has given me today. Revelation chapter 16 through 18. And we shall read them. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways. And pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. And upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. And they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day, of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake. 
and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of martyrs, of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. They, these have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the land, and the land shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords, and king of kings. And they that are with him are called, and chosen, and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, unto the word of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Chapter 18 And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. 
For strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her. When they see, shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and of fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thy own wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all in thee. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For one in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In our regular reading... We're back to our regular reading. Hallelujah. We're on chapter one of the second books of the second book of Kings. The Lord condemns Ahaziah. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter one. The Lord condemns Ahaziah. Soon after King Ahab of Israel died, the country of Moab rebelled against his son, King Ahaziah. One day Ahaziah fell through the wooden splats around the porch on the fat the flat roof, excuse me, of his palace in Samaria, and he was badly injured. So he sent someone, he sent some messengers to the town of Ekron with orders to ask the god of Beelzebul if he would get well. About the same time, an angel from the Lord sent Elijah the prophet from Tishbe to say to the king's messengers, Ahaziah has rejected Israel's own god by sending you to ask Beelzebul about his injury. Tell him that because he has done this, he's on his deathbed. And Elijah did what he was told. When the messengers returned to Ahaziah, he asked, Why are you back so soon? A man met us along the road with a message for you from the Lord, they answered. The Lord wants to know why you sent us to ask Beelzebub about your injury and why you don't believe there's a God in Israel. The man also told us that the Lord says you're going to die. What did the man look like? Ahaziah asked. He was hairy and had a leather belt around his waist, they answered. It must be Elijah, re replied Ahaziah. 
So at once he sent an army officer and 50 soldiers to meet Elijah. Elijah was sitting on the top of a hill at the time. The officer went up to him and said, Man of God, the king orders you to come down and talk with him. If I am a man of God, Elijah answered, God will send down fire on you and your 50 soldiers. Fire immediately came down from heaven and burned up the officer and his men. Ahaziah sent another officer and 50 more soldiers to Elijah. The officer said, Man of God, the king orders you to come see him right now. If I am a man of God, Elijah answered, fire will destroy you and your 50 soldiers. And God sent down fire from heaven on the officer and his men. Ahaziah sent a third army officer and 50 more soldiers. This officer went up to Elijah, then he got down on his knees and begged, Man of God, please be kind to me and these 50 servants of yours. Let us live. Fire has already wiped out the other officers and their soldiers. Please don't let it happen to me. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go with him and don't be afraid. So Elijah got up and went with the officer. When Elijah arrived, he told Ahaziah, The Lord wants to know why you sent messengers to Ekron to ask Beelzebub about your injury. Don't you believe there's a God in Israel? Ahaziah, because you did that, the Lord says you will die. Ahaziah died, just as the Lord had said. But since Ahaziah had no sons, Joram, his brother, then became king. This happened in the second year that Joram, son of Jehoshaphat, was king of Judah. Everything else Ahaziah did while he was king and is written in the history of the kings of Israel. Hallelujah. God's will in tomorrow. We'll read the second book of Kings. We'll be on chapter two. The Lord takes Elijah away. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not even promised the next hour or the rest of the day. So please tell your loved ones that you love them. Show love to any and all and live peaceable with all men. Also tell them our Father God who is Jesus Christ. Father God is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit came down that begotten body. That same Holy Spirit dwells within you and I. If we seek him in sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, you should find him. Hallelujah. Don't have aught with anyone. If you have problems with someone, please ask forgiveness. You must forgive. Just as you want your Father God in heaven to forgive you, you must forgive your, your fellow man. I don't care who he may be. I don't care if he's your worst enemy. You better forgive him. If you want the Father God to forgive you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you all for the love of the Lord and Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. And give Father God thanks. Okay? He woke you up this morning. Many have not opened their eyes this morning and will not open their eyes. Okay? And, um, I, all, you all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. From the youngest to the oldest alike, we love you all. And Father God loves you more. God bless you. Bye-bye.